Welcome back to another episode of This Week on Channel 9. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Cloud Advocate. And my shirt this week is from the uh, Travis Scott by McDonald's collab. So it's kind of a McCactus line. I think I ordered this in, I don't know, like September or October, November. I don't remember when. I finally got it recently. It's awesome. So that's my hoodie this week. And before we get into this week's latest developer news, I had to just kind of comment on the story that it's Thursday as I'm recording this. I don't know where this is going to end, but game stonks anyone? This is this is crazy. This is hilarious. And we're not going to talk about it, but I had to mention it because it's literally, I think, the craziest thing I've ever seen in my life following markets. And it definitely crosses over into a lot of dev and kind of nerdery stuff because 2021, man, it's it's bizarre. So game stonk on all, I guess. Be safe with your investments. But enough about all that nonsense. Let's get into this week's latest developer news. So first things first, Windows Terminal 1.6 preview is available now. And this is the first Windows Terminal release of the new year. So it's got some really exciting things in this preview release, including access. Now, this is still very alpha to the new settings UI. So the way that the settings have worked in Windows Terminal up until now has been that it's been like configured in a JSON file, very similar to how Visual Studio Code's settings work. Well, the team is working on a actual, you know, GUI settings uh, tab. You can enable it in alpha stage right now in the preview. And that's pretty awesome. It's still in early phases. The team wants feedback, but that is available in the Windows Terminal 1.6 preview. You can get that off of GitHub. You can also get it from the Microsoft Store. And I've got links in the show notes in the description down below for you to check out a blog post from Kayla, who talks about all the new features, how you can get started, how you can get feedback. We love, love, love Windows Terminal, so great stuff. Next things up, um, I wanted to give a shout out to my buddy Jay, who wrote a great guide to Azure boards. And if you haven't ever used Azure boards, it's part of um, Azure DevOps, and it's a really great way to kind of keep track of releases and I'm planning things, and even just to do a little bit of like you know, project management and um, organization. So it's a great guide. I've got a link to it in the show notes in the description down below. Check out Azure boards, and also like let me know your favorite ways of either tracking and planning things um, or, or keeping organized organized in the comments down below. Uh, next up, I wanted to share that the Python team has released their first big update of uh, for the Visual Studio Code release uh, extension in 2021. That is available now. I've got a link to the blog post in the show notes in the description, which has all the details. There are some new things happening with debugging. There are a couple of uh, there's um, some support for some other new features. All the details are in the blog in the show notes in the description down below. And you can also uh, download the extension from that link, and you can contribute and learn more on the GitHub. So great stuff from the Python team, if you use Python and uh, you use Visual Studio Code, be sure you check out that extension because it's awesome. Next up, this is actually also really great. So um, I was actually talking to my husband about this recently because he's been doing some infrastructure as code stuff in his day job. And we love infrastructure as code, or at least I do, in kind of the DevOps world. And in a lot of cases, what you wind up doing is you use something like Terraform or ARM templates, which are awesome, but they're using their own kind of meta language um, so that you can do your infrastructure as code. Well, there's a there's a project out here called uh, Pulumi, and what Pulumi does is it uses Python. So if you already are a Python person, you can use Pulumi as your infrastructure as code mechanism. And so uh, Dean has a fantastic getting started guide. I've got a link to it in the show notes in the description down below. I would also love to hear your thoughts about what sorts of infrastructure as code um, you know, languages you use, whether you use something like Terraform, whether you use something else, if you're happy with kind of an ARM templates and Azure CLI combo, if you think the whole thing is, is bunk and are just like, I like my PowerShell and I will continue to do that. I wanna hear all of your thoughts. So let us know, but this is really good stuff. In other news, I wanted to give a shout out to uh, also a uh, happy birthday to everyone's favorite developer, Scott Hanselman. Happy birthday, Scott. It was uh, by the time you see this, it'll have been you know probably a, a few days past. But Scott wrote a really great guide on his blog to using TailScale with Windows to use WSL2 and uh, Visual Studio Code. And what TailScale is is it's basically it's a VPN, but it's kind of like a mesh VPN. And I don't want to get into all the nitty gritty about how it works, but what's nice about it is that it kind of creates 
a really easy way for you to connect lots of different disparate networks together, but have them be accessible. Um, even if you are coming in from another machine, if you want to have like a sane looking domain name, it's safe, it's it's open source, it's a really cool system. And so he has a great guide for using TailScale um, along um, on Windows so that you can use it with WSL2 or Visual Studio Code, which can be really useful if you're trying to SSH into another Windows machine from Visual Studio uh, Code or, or, or from, from Windows in general. So really good tips here. Great guys, Scott, happy birthday. Check out the link to that in the show notes and the description down below. Uh, and uh, next up, I wanna talk about just kind of a tip. I've been seeing some things on the internet this week. Uh, people have been bringing up dark mode and I think dark mode is awesome. It can be good for accessibility reasons. Also, you know, a lot of our phones and devices have it now. The hard thing is, is that if you have an existing website and you've been looking at how do I implement dark mode or even more, even better, like a, a dark or light mode switcher, that can feel kind of complicated. So my buddy Christian Heilman has a great um, kind of guide, just I think like 10 lines of code, where you add a, a dark light uh, switcher in CSS to your own site. Embrace dark mode is what I say. So check out what Christian did in uh, the show notes in the description down below. Over on channel nine this week, we have so much great content. So first up, uh, there is the beginner series to dev containers. And so I've got a link to the introduction in the show notes in the description down below, but you can check out the whole series. If you've wanted to get started with dev containers, I think this is a really good way to start. Containers are one of my favorite ways to develop. I think that it is far superior to a lot of the other options out there, and it certainly helps keep things sane and have you have like reproducible and repeatable processes without having to you know have either a million machines or deal with a bunch of VM nonsense. So check out this uh, beginner series, it's great stuff. And I also wanna give a shout out over on DevApps Labs, um, uh, Abel and Dan talk about Azure boards, which I mentioned earlier in the show because Jay has a really great guide, but he talks about it in the context of GitHub repos. So using Azure boards with your GitHub repos, which, is, which can be really powerful. So check out this episode of DevOps Labs, it's great. And then over on Learning with Dr. G, uh, Dr. Uh, Sarah, has um, some great stuff about before the first line of code. So stuff that you're going to be thinking about before you write that first line of code. So really great series. And, and her whole series, which she does, she live streams is awesome. Be sure to check that out. And so I've got links to all of these shows in the, the show notes in the description down below. And let, let us know your thoughts about all of that. And now it's time for my pick of the week. And this was just too cool not to share. Someone managed to hack his 17 year old iPod to get Spotify working on it. Really remarkable because a 17 year old device didn't have Bluetooth, didn't have a lot of external uh, connectivity, was famously like kind of derided by Slashdot for having less space than a Nomad, no wireless, all that stuff. Still was insanely popular. Somebody managed to figure this out. I love that. Of course it does make me think of the Zune, pour one out for a real one, um, which, had a lot of features later on, you know, that the iPod uh, didn't have, uh, but, but didn't really find its, its success. Anyway, I love that somebody managed to get this working. Um, let me know in the comments down below what type of tech you would either, you either still from like, you know, 15 to 20 years ago, either you still use or you would like to see people find modern use cases for. I would love to, to know your thoughts. So, so let me know there. But that's my pick of the week. I think this is awesome. Well, that does it for me. If you like this episode, go ahead and give us a like on YouTube. It helps us out. And uh, go ahead and subscribe to Microsoft Developer for all of your nerd needs. And let us know in the comments, like I said, uh, your, your thoughts on uh, either tech that you would like to see repurposed or your, your thoughts on any of the other stories that we covered this week. See you next time.